What's up everyone, DJ's here. Today I'm bringing you a nice replay commentary, one of my own games. I saw a lot of you in the comment section want to see some of my games, well, I'll give it to you. And today, we're doing a standard match. No fog this time, so you fog goblins, put your head up, start listening. Uh, I think everyone should be playing both standard and fog. High funds, don't play that, don't touch that. But standard and fog, you should get good at both of them. Anyway. My opponent was Monty Sigurdsson, and I actually, he, I played him like really early on in Advanced Wars by Web, like one of my first 10 games, I think, and it was like a 40 turn, like Adder game. We were both Adder on like Shangri La, and I remember he was so much higher, he was like 1100 or something, and I was like 1000 or something. And I was like, oh my goodness, a pro, like he's gonna whoop me. Anyway, this map right here is called Delphinus. Delphinus kind of reminds me of like uh, the Delphi shield and Fire Emblem, just random fact. It's one of those standard maps where there's a strong side and a weak side, it's very obvious. So on this side, you can see over here, this is the strong side for Black since he's going to get that second base. Two bases against one in an airport. Same thing goes over here. You got one base in an airport versus two bases. Uh, so basically, this game can go a few ways. One is the two base side overcomes the one base side via like artillery spamming if you get an artillery here or here you basically base lock them they can't do anything and they lose the side um same goes over here another thing that can happen is you can go for an hq rush or just go strong middle and overcome with properties so you can't really completely forsake the middle because your hq is somewhat vulnerable once they break these pipes over here uh same goes over here taking a look around this map just glance over it i'm not going to say any hints or anything but i just want you to guess what do you think is the best tier 3 co for this map uh, your options are Andy, Lash, Kindle, Drake, Rachel, and Sammy drop down to tier 3 for this matchup. Just give the map a glance and tell me what you think. I'll give you a second. Alright, so I'll tell you one thing. Uh, Lash is not great on this map. Nor Neither is Drake. Uh, I think Andy's pretty strong. Kindle's alright. Uh, Rachel's pretty decent because it's a smaller map. But Sammy is overpowered in this map in my opinion because I think that mechs are super strong in this map. Especially in the defensive, like if you put a couple mechs over here on the defensive, like they're not going to be able to get your weak side. The mechs and mountains here, you're not getting past that. Same goes over here. Also, like capturing properties on this, like it, you send your like stronger infantry over the middle through this river and they're going to capture versus the other infantry. So I thought Sammy was an astonishingly strong pick. I didn't even notice her when they were picking the COs. I thought it was going to be first like... Kindle or something, so I was like, I'm gonna do a mini flex and go Lash. She's not that great, but I just wanted a mini flex first, like Andy or something. I didn't know Sammy was there. So I was a little scared when I saw this matchup, to be perfectly honest. I was like, ooh, it's gonna be tough. Maybe if I was Andy, it'd be a better match for Sammy, but Lash is gonna be tough, but you know what? I think I'm confident in myself. We'll see what I can do with it. Anyway, let's get into the game. So uh, basically, you start off with some typical infantry builds, nothing uh, out of the ordinary. You of course go for the base first, so you can pump out more units earlier on. Now here's a little bridge or a little gap between our uh, advances right here. So Monty goes for the nice capture chain over here first, whereas I actually go for this property up here. The reason I did this property and not the chain, which would net you more gold earlier, more advanced for this buckaroos early. It's because you're eventually going to lose this side because he has two bases over here and I have two bases over here. So this is his strong side. So if you do not capture this early, he will finish capturing that property and interrupt this cap if I went for this property over here and could went for it like later on. So if I don't capture this now, I'm not going to be able to get it later. So basically my goal is to hold on to this property as long as possible against his strong side. Uh, whereas if you go for the capture chain, sure you get more income early, but this is safe. This basically belongs to blue anyway, so I want for a more contested property early. Uh, that was my rationale at least. So other than that, pretty standard infantry build. I mean, I think he's probably going to get this property anyway because he's Sammy and infantry are overpowered. And I can't really interrupt that cap. So we're just going infantry, you know, we added, added, do. He builds a tank on the strong side, and uh, that's typically what I do is build a tank on the strong side when I have the funds. Uh, however, in this game, I actually went for a tank on the weak side. I sort of regret this for now. Like, I understand my, my thing was I want to capture this property and this property safely. However, I'm not going to be able to hold on to this property in, like, in hindsight because once he blasts open this pipe, that is 100% his property. I have, I'm going to have no chance holding that. So I think it was a little foolish of me to think that I could uh, safely secure uh, this property over here with tank backup. I probably, in retrospect, should have built a tank over here. And I probably could have denied this property uh, with, with two guys firing down on it. So, you know, 
first baboon brained uh, move of the, the match for me. Uh, let's see here. So, assume, and he goes for an artillery as well. And artillery is pretty strong in this map. Like I said earlier, you can go for like an artillery lock and like lock down this base over here. Uh, same goes over here, or you can just blast open the pipe early. With Lash, you can actually put it down on this forest to get the 20% bonus and blast that pipe open in like two turns, plus like a tank hit or a mech hit, I believe. Uh, so that would have been smart on my part. We'll see if I actually do that. Um, but yeah, so artillery pretty decent on this map. No, no doubt about that. Um, I go for this property that is not mine. Uh, his tank can attack it, uh, only via this one space. He cannot go in the forest. He can only attack via that one uh, bridge over there, which is why I position my tank over here. It does not, it couldn't reach this forest over here to maximum protect, but it protects the one space that this tank could attack from. And he doesn't have tank backup since he's an artillery. So this tank is essentially protecting this unit, so he cannot interrupt that cap. Uh, it also is protecting this infantry. So while the tank build over here wasn't the smartest, I'm trying to make the best use of it possible. Um, so that's just using zoning for tanks. Uh, let's see over here. Typical, so I'm not going to be able to interrupt that unless I stop capturing there, which I'm not going to do. Um, so I think this is a dumb move on his part right here, because that's essentially my property. It's my strong side. The thing about strong sides and weak sides, I like to think of it as chess. In chess, if you're ahead, you want to get all the pieces off the board. Or just in simple mathematics, let's say you have a 10, uh, 10 to 8 advantage. You knock off 5 from each side. Now it's 5 to 3. 5 to 3 is a lot bigger advantage than 10 to 8, you know what I mean? Or eventually you knock it down even further, it's 1 to 2, that's a huge advantage. So I like to think of it as, when I have a stronger side, equal trades are perfectly fine. Like, if both of these die, I'm up on the higher hand over here because I have two bases producing units. So, typically you don't even have to go for winning engagements always on your strong side. Just, you know, maintaining equal engagements is perfectly fine because you will have more pieces. You will want to trade down to make each of your pieces that more important. Uh, so I don't agree with this. I mean, he interrupts the cap, but yeah, I'm, that property is going to be mine. Which is also why, like, you don't have to always go for uh, super strong engagements. Anyway, typical, I like this little chain over here. Uh, nothing spectacular about that, though. And then I'm going for this property here, and see, he's got this artillery over here, so he'll be blasting through there pretty soon. Uh, which makes these two properties in big danger. Um, nothing out of the ordinary here. Moving in my arty. Uh, a thing about artillery, I, I mentioned it earlier. Uh... Artillery are a lot stronger and standard than fog. And people might think, well, you can hide the artillery in the forest. Like, yeah, but the thing about artillery is, artillery don't necessarily need to shoot things to be effective. Like, artillery serve as a great deterrent. Not necessarily every unit needs to fire to be effective. When I build an artillery, I'm basically pointing it at something I want the opponent to get off of. They don't. It doesn't have to hit anything, it just has to serve as a deterrent. If I move my artillery here, He's going to have to get off that property or he's going to get blasted. So even if I do not fire and he moves this infantry back, I still achieved my goal here of moving him off of the base. So that's one thing I think beginners don't grasp. Like artillery zoning is really important, uh, indirect zoning in particular. You don't need to necessarily have engagements. You just need to use them to push your opponent off of where you want them to be off of. So you'll see how this comes into later in uh, the game. I think the... Uh, the mode or the main lesson around this match is positioning. I think positioning and zoning are huge uh, parts of Advanced Wars gameplay, especially in standard. Fog, you can get away with it, like positioning. People don't know where units are. You know, it can get a little sloppy or whatever. I mean, fog's more fun, let's be honest. But in standard, you cannot get away with sloppiness. Uh, if your things are out of position, your opponent will punish you at the higher levels. So you need to know good positioning. Uh, so, and I talked about infantry walls earlier. Infantry walls basically are protecting units. Uh, we'll go about that in a few turns. I think it becomes actually relevant. But just remember, positioning is the lesson of this match. Rice Muncher, whatever I was talking about. Uh, strong side, weak side. I think that was the other one. Uh, but this match, it's all about positioning. Because it's standard. So here we go over here. He's about to blast away at that pipe scene. Uh, and basically go straight for the middle. I don't go for the pipe scene early. Uh, it, it's another thing about this game, you can go for the pipe scene early, you can go for it later. I offer it later, and I think this is actually suboptimal play. I think going for it earlier puts a lot more pressure on the center uh, against the weak side over here, so you can actually get your units around the weak side even earlier instead of doing this little U-turn around the mountains. 
Uh, so I think I kind of suboptimally played. I could have put this artillery uh, over, it would take two turns because it has a forest here, but I could plop it in the forest after two turns, blast it away after two more turns after that of firing, plus a mech hit, just wrap the mech around over here, uh, and then I'd be able to go through. So he's going to blast through this probably around turn 10. I don't remember when I finished my... Uh, my pipe seam breaking, but it was a lot later than that. I think that was another uh, baboon brain mistake on my part. So just remember, you know, learn from your mistakes, own up to them. That's what matches all are, ab are all about. Uh, I like reviewing like games where I misplayed rather than games where I just crushed the opponent because like you don't need like a boost your ego or anything. You need to actually learn from your games to get better. Uh, so here, right here, infantry wall. He can't he can't attack this artillery. Uh, do, do, do. I basically move my tank over here. It's not really doing too much over here. I guess it's protecting this in the mountains, but is it really? Because if once he blasts that through, he's going to have two tanks, a mech, uh, an artillery ready to attack. So so if he does attack that or something, my tank is going to get obliterated. I also built an artillery over here, which I think might have been a little dumb move. I probably could have put more stuff over here on this side, my strong side. This is just going to be basically like hiding on the edge of the map, like trying to defend. I, I probably shouldn't have just given in on my weak side so early and like got so defensive. I think I should have strong put a stronger push towards the middle. Uh, we'll see how that comes into play later. Um, but positioning, not, I'm not in great positioning. Yeah, see, he's already blasting through the middle. The tank tank uh, went right through the seam. The seam is kind of glitching right now. Uh, but here, I'm going to show you a little lesson about uh, artillery zoning and walls. So right here, looks like he's pretty safe. He's got a tank or whatever. But in actuality, I get a free hit off on his infantry. Actually, I think I get a free kill. See, look out. You think, oh, the tank's just going to blast it away. He's got an X, whatever. The thing is, oh, before I get to that, dumb move by me. I, ra you know, I was ragging on Mangs before. I was like, don't use your medium tank to go attack random stuff on the, like, periphery. I made that old mistake over here. What am I, what is my tank going to do over here, man? It's on his strong side my weak side now it's like cut off from the middle because i can't even get over here because these two tanks in the mechs will blast me away so basically i'm confined to this side of the map now i can't even like retreat and go over there anymore so uh, this tank is basically by doing that instead of moving over to this uh property over here which i should have done and slowly moving it towards the middle basically said all right well this tank is completely marginalized for the rest of the game what's it gonna do like it's it's useless almost it doesn't even get the infantry kill if I remember correctly, I think this infantry actually comes into play later in the game, this 1 HP infantry, since it's not a 1 hit KO without the calm tower. Uh, so, yeah, it didn't really achieve much. But yeah, I go for this and you're like, oh yeah, but the tank can come around. Here's where walls and zoning come into play. See, I have an infantry wall, and he can get a hit off on this artillery, but that infantry is getting obliterated, and the hit would only do 2 tam do damage max. Uh, and this tank could get a nice hit off on this tank, but the artillery blasted away and I have tank backup. So that's where this whole like zoning and the artillery like um, deterrent comes into play. Like he's not going to go anywhere near this. He's not going to take any engagements that's in this artillery's way. It's, the artillery most likely will not fire next turn, but it basically pushes all his units back. So it's like a psychological thing. Artillery are really psychological and standard, which I love. That's why I love using artillery in standard play as much as possible, depending on the map. Uh, but just using as a deterrent can be quite fun. Oh, and especially when you're Jake and you get the increased range. Yeah, fun stuff. Okay, so the middle is basically his at this point. I have nothing to defend any of those things. He has a mech chain here. I can't interrupt this cap. I wouldn't even dream of interrupting that cap. With a mech chain and artillery backup, that's kind of overkill. But he basically completely controls the middle. I'm marginalized on the side. This tank has to move now because he's got two tanks over here. Um, he builds an artillery. It's fine. See, he has to retreat over here. He knows the artillery. I mean, the artillery zoning is just too powerful. So let's see. I'm trying to like somehow get back into the center, but it's not looking too great. I'm doing some more attack free hits. I guess I wouldn't call them free. That mech's going to get a hit off on this recon and probably kill it. Um, but I think it's done its job. I'm just trying to do the chest thing. And I'm trying to knock off his units over here. So he has, what, five, six units max over here. And I'm going to have a whole lot more. I'm going to get this cap over here. Get this cap over here. So basically, I'm just going, going crazy over here. This was kind of another baboon-brained mistake over here. Uh, Lash gets no bonuses tanks on roads. And I only have a 10% bonus because of the comm tower. Now, so this engagement is not going to be great. I was like, oh, yeah, Sammy has negative 10% uh, firepower for her tanks. Uh, but this engagement, 
oof. I'm not, it probably was a bad roll, but even if it was a good roll, it's not a great engagement. And I thought this artillery would, you know, be as a good deterrent, but he can just plop his artillery over here as well. Like, that's just a stupid engagement on my part. Just dumb stuff. You know, not game ending or anything, but you know, the dumb, uh, the dumb stuff adds up. I used my artillery as another deterrent. I said, all right, man, I'm not moving my tank. Uh, you can go try and kill it. Another thing that kind of scared me at the time here, which I don't think he would do in retrospect, is he could use his power here and one-shot my infantry, uh, and then use his tank to get a nice hit off of my artillery. But that would, that would probably need, he'd need to get a power probably. And then he would, you know, forsake victory march later on. So I didn't think he would do that. So I felt comfortable putting my infantry here and uh, leaving a little vulnerable. So bye-bye recon. You know, whatever. Kill, get, got killed two infantry or assisted with two infantry kills, so it wasn't completely useless or anything by that means. I can't interrupt this cap. It's Sammy. This infantry, even from the forge with the comm tower, it's not going to do enough. Man, I have to bring that infantry to like 3 HP to stop a cap? But yeah, that is not happening. Not happening. And he has a battle copter coming in. So this is like stunted, but I do, I did build the prophylactic or anticipatory anti-air. So I made a smart decision. Not all the decisions I made were dumb. And a smart decision here anticipating a battle copter that he was going to make next turn. But he has the middle. And I have nothing to stop him in the middle. Absolutely nothing. And he's just bringing these things in. He knows I can't attack. He knows I'm on the defensive over there. He takes a pretty decent engagement over there with the tank. Like I said, it was dumb. I'm getting two caps over here. I'm doing pretty decent in the capture game. But, like, he's going to get the middle. I'm not going to be able to hold that. I'm not going to be able to hold that. Uh... These are a little, you know, shaky over here. That's a little shaky, so mm, it's not looking too great for me right now. I went too hard on the sides. I should have gone more in the middle. Free hit, sort of, but this thing is going to get blasted to kingdom come next turn. Uh, I don't know. I probably should have healed that. Again, free hit us off on the mech. So when you typically have infantry versus mechs and your opponent has mechs, you want to attack the mech with your infantry because it's a cost-effective engagement because mechs cost 3,000 and infantry costs just 1,000. So typically, if it's available, I will attack an infantry to an enemy mech. Um, so right here, that's basically what I was thinking. So usually when I have my mechs, I usually have my own infantry in front of the mechs protecting them from other infantry. Uh, so, yeah, I think you'll see this later in the match. He does a pretty decent effective uh, job of showing how to have his mechs protected from my infantry. See, I don't even bother attacking. I'm just like, hey, buddy, how's it going? Uh, can't do jack. At this point, I'm like, man, he's got mechs. Like, they're going to annihilate my tanks. I'm going to have to tech up. Time to let the big boys come to town. Bring on the medis. Um, so this thing, I, just, I get a little hit off on the pipe scene, but, you know, I'm way behind. It's, tur it's day 12. I think he blasted his in day, like, 9 or something. I'm way behind in the whole, like, blasting through the pipe scene thing. Um, now we're even on captures after he captured this property over here. Even though I had this little offense over here, we're even on captures. Uh, this copter annihilates my tank. Gets a nice hit off on my artillery. That was just dumb. I'm just making dumb plays right now. The thing he captured with a five infantry, which actually gives him seven with Sammy, I think, and then he puts a nine on there, which gives him thirteen. So that he actually gets to capture that in two turns by using his overpowered Samminess and then just taking it. So I was like, "Oh, Sammy, why are you so good?" The mech chain is coming. There's no, I can't stop this. This is too powerful. There's no way. There's just no way without like a massive medium tank army. That one HP infantry is being a little pest. He builds his own medium tank. Uh, it's weaker than mine as Lash, but, you know, it's still strong. Um, artillery zoning, I can't attack that tank. No chance. Let's see what I do here. Finally capture this property. Medium tank's coming in. Basically, I, these things are cut off, man. Like, I can't even reach my HQ for good defense. I can go over to the plane or the road where they get blasted. So I can, I'm kind of cut off right here. So I needed to go to the middle earlier in the game. Conceding the middle was probably my biggest mistake of this whole match. Actually, no, I made a plenty of stupid mistakes. There's probably more to come. But it was one of the stupid mistakes of the match. I build another medium. I'm like, medium tank roach. Let's go, baby. Let's blast some mechs. I got Lash. I know. My tanks are slightly stronger. I know what I'm doing. I can take cost-effective engagements. Maybe I can even capture back some properties. That'd be difficult, but, you know. Uh, don't let your memes be dreams, as uh, what Plato once said. Uh, so, anyway. Yeah, so he's basically getting back on his weak side, this property. He's got an artillery there. It's going to be a little difficult to interrupt. Oof, that hurt. I 
actually this is pretty so he's using zoning but the thing about using artillery zoning you need to have maximum protection but he didn't calculate correctly because slash can actually kill this right here the medium tank it might be a roll but if it is a roll then this infantry will finish it off 100 percent of the time i think so the medium tank plus the infantry will kill this tank right here so i think that was a little bit of an oversight on his part i'm making some like strategic bad moves but i'm making smart tactical moves like i know good engagements but i'm making like you know what i mean it's like I have a gaping wound, but I'm putting a bunch of like band-aids over it right now. I think that's basically like a, euf a euphemism of how the game's going, or analogy rather. So I'm able to put that back. Remember how I said our uh, anti-air for zoning? Uh, well, I'm an idiot. I think I actually attack the uh, artillery with anti-air, putting it right in the tank's view at this turn. Yeah, I do. A little questionable on my part. I guess I thought at this 5 HP artillery would do enough to block it. Okay, here's one good engagement by me. Like, I'm taking pretty good engagements. I think I have, like, a unit count and value lead right now, or I will soon. Like, I, I know, I'm taking good engagements. Like I said, infantry to mech, take the trade. You know, I'm, I'm holding together. I'm, see, like I said, medium tank rush. So, when you see three tanks, you build a medium tank. But what happens when you see three medium tanks? Well, there's no answer for that. The world may never know. Anyway, do I? Have, I still haven't blasted that damn pipe scene. Yeah, that's not a pretty good engagement for him. Like, that's not gonna do much. But the thing is, his charge. So this is why Lash is not that great. I, Lash has seven stars to use her superpower, her scop, and Sammy only has eight. So Sammy's is a lot stronger than Lash's, just one more star. And I need to get off my superpower before Sammy so I can put my infantry or any units on my properties, make them semi-invincible so she can't capture the properties. But if Sammy gets the superpower before I can defend my property, I need to put this infantry there, my infantry there, put my tank on there, like put my infantry there, you know, cover all bases. If I can't do that before Sammy can do Victory March, I am royally screwed because she will capture so many properties. There's so many vulnerable properties. My God, he's got a one infantry, one HP infantry over here. I don't know what it's going to do. Medium tanks come in, bad engagement by him, but you know, whatever. You're going to get blasted by the artillery. Like, but I think at this point, he's like, you know what? I don't care about stupid engagements. I'm just sacrificing my units just to get that scop um and he gets it so whoop de doo let's uh bye bye no chance Ugh. so i we had in tied income Ugh. ugly you hate to see it folks you hate to see it that one hp infantry that the tank didn't even kill oh this pains me oh this pains me Ten thousand income lead my god Oofy. So one thing I think he did wrong here is he should have attacked my infantry over here and here. So I cannot reclaim the properties. Not always defeating, you know, cost-effective engagements. Like cost-effective engagements are great, but if you can kill infantry from recapturing and you have a monumental income lead, that can be more effective. Like, you know what I mean? So sometimes it's good to like prevent recapture. So he probably should have killed that infantry and done a lot of damage to it right there. But he didn't. Or attacked one of these infantry, you know what I mean? Like, that was just random. He shouldn't attack that tank. That was just dumb. Yeah, those are getting blasted. Blasted. Yeah, then look how fast that crumbled when your infantry one-shot other infantry. It's not even funny. Just a slaughter fest. Slaughterhouse 5 or whatever. Okay, now I pop, pop my superpower. And, uh, yeah, I guess I don't know what I'm doing here. I got a lot of defense and stuff, so I'm like, okay, I need to recapture these properties. Like, I'm down 10k, like, I'm in near resign mode. If you're, like, down 10k, you cannot happen more than two turns or you're screwed. Two turns is 20k, and that's just insane amount of money more. Insane! So I'm like, I need to get properties. If I don't get, like, at least three properties within the next, like, two turns, I'm just gonna resign. That's just how it is. Still taking cost-effective engagements. If you look at the amount of, like, units and cost and stuff, like, I'm still winning that. But he's got positioning. He's got more properties. I'm on a timer. I like to think of like, this is like, I'm fighting, Monty Sigurdsson right now, I'm like fighting underwater. That's kind of a random analogy, but like, or no, I'm fighting holding my breath. That's a better analogy. Like I can beat up someone like who's like weaker or lower rated like for 30 seconds, but then I'm starting to lose consciousness. Like slowly and slowly, like the income advantage 
It's just gonna wear you down so much. Doesn't matter how strong, you can be Muhammad Ali, but if you're not breathing for a good two minutes, like a toddler will kick you, just like flop over, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter how skilled you are. Uh, if you have a huge income advantage, they're going to beat you down. So I'm taking some pretty decent engagements. I'm able to recapture three of these, which are gonna be really hard to stop because my infantry will have six terrain stars, the superpower bonus to 10 defense. So 70% defense right there. Yeah, good luck stopping that. So you're gonna have to have a lot of uh, firepower to stop that. <laughs> good one, nice try. Man, I'm getting close to blasting this, I hope, because it's turned freaking 15. Copter goes in my anti-air is no-go range, unfortunately. One, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, would it be able to reach it with a... I'm not sure if I can blast it. We'll see. Um, yeah, I'm just getting annihilated on my, on my strong side, which is kind of embarrassing. But, you know, medium tank engagements, I still can win this. I can back it up with some artillery. And he feels like Golf Paul Neo, uh, Neo Tank. Now we're just trying to rub it in. <laughs> Starting to rub it in. The massive income lead, he's just beating me on both sides now. He beat me in the middle. He's beating me on all fronts. Let's be honest. He's beating me on every single front, sort of. Well, actually, I'm, I'm kind of coming back in the middle. He's beating me on both sides. I'm kind of, like, delayed. Like, I was winning on both sides, doing the pincer or whatever. And then he was winning in the middle. Then I shift all my force to the middle. And now he's taking back the sides. It's just kind of embarrassing. He's kind of embarrassing me right now, I'm going to be honest. I, I luckily am able to recapture three properties. Uh, do a little stuff so i'm down 4k 4k is pretty bad it's not resign mode but it's like i'm on a timer now i need to do something i need to get some really good engagements i need to recapture some more properties i have my eye on this property 21,000, 23,000 is a lot more manageable i can win a game with that so that's basically my mo is get this property and this stronger engagements stronger tactics i think i can take them down the question is he's gonna retake these properties probably he's got a huge army over here i'm not gonna be able to hold that property Probably not this one either. Like, so it's 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 a t tough situation. I'm just like blasting. I come out blasting and um, taking some decent engagements. Like, yeah, he's not gonna it's artillery zoning. There you go. It's not gonna do anything. He's not gonna do anything to that. He can attack with the copter, but it's gonna be a suicide kamikaze mission because I have my anti air. Still haven't blasted that freaking pipe team. I built a copter. I don't know. I just wanted to have a deterrent. I'm running out of money too. I have no money. It's kind of sad, sad state of affairs. He's just, it's getting ugly. Um, just when the golf balls start showing up, bad things happen. He's re he's taking that with a two HP infantry. I don't even know anymore. Um, he's building his own copter. He's got so much funds, or he did before. Um, I'm sort of winning the middle though. I'm pushing him back. I think I can retake this property eventually. I've got artillery support. I've got his fully HP uh, medium tank and uh, tanks. Um, so I'm basically going in, I'm like, YOLO, and, uh, just killing some units, weakening some units, I'm like, I gotta, I gotta get this property, I gotta prevent him from getting this property over here, that's my only chance, that's basically it. Finally blast through, I think it's, like, glitching or whatever. So, finally, on turn 16, I break the pipe scene, it took damn long. See, I'm not putting my thing over here and killing that mech because I'm not giving my my artillery. Or, I mean, sorry, anti-air for zoning, not fighting. Zoning. Protect all your units from battlecopters. Protect all your units from bombers. They're there for zoning. They're not supposed to be killing infantry or mechs unless they're absolutely safe. So just keep that in mind. That was a dumb mistake. You saw what happened to my uh, anti-air over here. It did not live a happy life. He was buried in a shallow grave. At most, his family got a $25 uh, dollar Best Buy gift card. Uh, things were not looking good for him. Okay, so now he's going to uh, blast away all these units over here. Uh, yeah, it's not looking good. Now he's just shift shifting all his units over here, getting some free infantry pot shots. He's beating me on my weak side really strongly now. I have the middle, but like, what use is it? Sort of, he's just like... And the mechs over here, I can't fight back on his weak side either. It's, he's just winning both fronts. I have the middle though. So positioning is good. Like, I like my positioning. I'm in the middle. Then I sense an opportunity here. I'm like, man, I can probably make this HQ in two turns. And he's got no units over here. Uh, so I'm like, yeah, let's HQ rush. The thing is, I think he'll beat me too with the HQ rush because he's going to have a victory march soon. And he's got Neo tanks. He's got freaking golf balls, man. Like, he's got a battle copter. He's going to get his charge or whatever. Like, but you know, it's worth a Hail Mary or something. So I'm positioning all my stuff. I have my two blockers. I'm like, 
if I put my tanks over here and my infantry there, that's like a shot I have. Like, it, let's be honest, that's probably my only hope. And I'm trying like, oh yeah, this will defend against this whole army. Like, yeah, that's not gonna, that's not gonna fly. So I'm, I'm, I'm shoveling all my units. I'm like, let's go. HQ cap, he probably thinks I'm gonna go for this property, but I'm not doing it. I'm going for it all. Uh, he's gonna recapture that and he's gonna have a massive income lead again. Even though I, so we're actually we're gonna have an even trade here. He's not gonna interrupt that cap, and he knows what's going on. He's bringing his infantry close. He's bringing all his in. He's he's going in for the HQ. He sniffs the blood. He's he's the shark in jaws. I'm the lady on the inner tube or whatever. I'm gonna get annihilated. I don't know why I did that. that. Was just dumb. I think I was trying to weaken his units or his infantry for the HQ cap, but it won't really matter if he is victory march. Now I bring in another blocker. I'm like. Let's bring in the big beefy guns. Let's let's block some stuff. They're like some bouncers or something. Not letting people in. Uh, I'm just getting really defensive at this point. I'm like, this is my only hope. This is literally my only hope in the entire game. I'm just bringing a bunch of shit, shoving it up there. I'm like, yeah, let's like just make a wall of crap, and maybe he won't be able to get through. But the question remains: Will he get victory march? Though he's got all of these units. He's going to get there very soon. I'm just like building a fighter. I was like, maybe if I plop my fighter on there, it'll buy me an extra turn or two because his anti air is all the way up here that I can just plop it there and he can't do anything and then I can actually win. Um, but Monty Sigurdsson's a good player. He's not going to fall for anything like that. He immediately puts it there. He knows it's in range. He doesn't care because it'll give him charge if I attack him anyway. He wants charge at this point. A victory march would ensure a quick, easy victory. <laughs> and uh, he's just blasting things. He's putting things in range of like, actually, no, that's not in range. Now he's like, oh, shit, he's near my HQ. I'm like, yeah, Monty boy, you probably should have moved your units over here to defend your HQ. So he, he realizes it a little too late. Now it's just, he's just using units to get charge. I'm like, ooh, okay. He's even doing this. He's taking a really random engagement just so he can get some charge. And to be honest, he's going to get enough charge. What's it going to be like? Three, uh, 30,000, not even 30,000, like, he's bringing all this crap in, I'm like, well, I don't have a prayer's hope, like, I can't block the HQ, he's gonna get the charge, he's gonna kill the medium tank, I need to, like, run, but I can't run, because he's gonna have this, uh, battlecopter attack the artillery and get some charge, he's gonna get a lot of charge from this medium tank, do this medium tank, the tanks, I got no shot, really, he's gonna get the charge, he's just building up this thing, so I go for the HQ cap, and then something... Something happens in my brain. I, I start laughing to myself like this. <laughs> because I came up with an idea. So if you look at the map, something strange happens. This battlecopter just suddenly crashes into the water. It's very strange. It just crashed. Suddenly, what, what, what was that? Everything just starts dying. Everything. Everything starts dying. Everything. I start blocking. I kill all my units. So he cannot get the charge to get victory march. This medium tank cannot attack a fighter. Uh, he, I don't think all of these units attacking this units will give him enough charge. It'll be very close. It'll be a close call, but I don't think it's enough. So I just start deleting everything but the blockers. I'm like, okay, so this medium tank can kill this tank. And this anti-air can kill that. And this tank maybe can kill this on a super lucky roll. But he doesn't have a third thing to attack with. I build another fighter for just like flex purposes but i'm like i think i got this but i like hold my breath see he's just going for the charge he doesn't care about the bad engagement he's going for the charge it takes this engagement to get some more charge awfully getting awful close Ooh, he's getting really close he's oh, like ten thousand away but he can't find anything else to charge with nothing nothing so i'm just chilling with my fighters over here and he, he can't do anything. He wanted, he thought he had free units to kill over here. He thought he had free charge. But it wasn't enough. You can capture all you want. He gives up. I won by HQ capture by deleting all of my units. So, like I said earlier, positioning. I made a lot of dumb positioning moves. But I made some smart moves as well. Look here, when I first have a glimpse of going up here. Look where all his units are. Look what they're doing. So, I go up here. I show my hand. It's too late at this point for him. Like, let's look here. So, I move up my tanks up here with the blockers. This is the first time he kind of made a mistake. 
He should be moving all his units over here to protect. But what does he do? The tank doesn't go over this way. The tank goes over here. Artillery doesn't go over there. It goes over here. And the medium tank. If you build a neo tank, it would be able to go one square farther. I think if you build a neo tank here, and he had the funds for it, he might have actually won. Because it has one extra move. And it's stronger. And it could have one shot my tanks or something. And this battlecopter as well. It could have come in. But where did it go? Uh, certainly not over there. It went down. He didn't realize the imminent danger. He thought I was going for this or for this. Oh no. My infantry. Don't let your... Uh, Dreams be memes, or your memes be dreams. Uh, you got to go for it. You got to go for the gold. So that was his main thing. He forgot positioning. I have the center right now. Even though I have worse units, even though I have worse income, I have positioning. He cannot stop me. I think it is almost physically impossible. Maybe if he throws in this battlecopter, he has a, a prayer's chance. But it's just not happening. I could have even deleted my units in a uh, turn earlier. The thing is, I didn't want him to sniff it out. I could have started deleting here and just, like, moved them all up here. But if I let him sniff out that, that was, I was going to delete everything, I think he would have moved everything over here immediately instead of, like, waiting an extra turn. So I think it was smart for me to wait. And look how he protects his mechs over here. I was talking about protecting with infantry. Uh, well, I guess they're not maximum. Well, this one's maximally protected. Uh, but you can see how he has such a strong front over here. Anyway. Positioning is huge, and blocking. Using blockers is very effective. I was also trying to use my fighter as a blocker, a very expensive one, albeit, but positioning. Standard is all about positioning. Make sure your units are in a proper place or your opponent will take advantage of it. All of these had a purpose. They weren't here to kill things. They were here to serve as blockers. That's all they were here to do. He didn't really know what he was doing with his units. First, they were over here. Then they realize a little later, like, oh, maybe we should go to the HQ. He's going for the HQ. You need to have a purpose. Getting free hits on infantry? Yeah, he got these free hits. Just like my tank got a free hit on the one HP infantry. And look how that turned out. He recaptured a property there. Free hits, you know, they're tempting. I get it. But don't go for them. You should always be thinking about, what am I doing with my units? What goal are they like achieving? They should have a purpose, and they should have like a timetable. What do I want to do? How long do I want to do it? I could have captured this and then went for the HQ. That's not my timetable. My timetable is, I need to win now. He's going to annihilate me if I do not go now. So I basically use my positioning to win the game, and a game that was essentially lost on my part from a lot of stupid blunders on my part. But luckily, I was able to use positioning and just general situational awareness. I knew, like, if I saw this and I was on his side, I probably would have moved all my units here earlier. But that comes with experience. I've had this happen to me before where people have deleted units uh, so I can't get charged and etc. Anyway, that is the game. I hope you all enjoyed yourselves. I hope you uh, leave some comments, questions, etc. about the game. I'd love to hear from y'all. And uh, anyway, y'all take care now. Bye-bye.